Hello, this is Seher from Easy Peasy, and the topic we are going to discuss today is called as Hershey and Chase experiment. If we look at the timeline of genetics, we can see that in 1944, three scientists named as Colin McLeod, Mecklen McCarty, and Oswald Avery discover in their experiment with Streptococcus pneumonia that DNA is the biomolecule which is responsible for transferring the heredity material from their parents to their offsprings. But they were still confused and they were thinking that their procedure might have some type of contamination and that contamination is responsible for transferring the genetic material from parents to their offspring. So, in 1952, Two scientists named as Alfred Hershey and Martha Chase did the experiment on bacteriophage T2. Now bacteriophage is a virus that attacks bacteria. So they land on the surface of the bacteria and then insert something inside this bacteria which is responsible for replicating this virus inside the bacteria. After some time, they will explode the bacteria like this and this virus will come out from that bacteria in order to infect the next one. Okay, now if we look at the structure of this bacteriophage T2, we can see that they are made up of head, collar, and tail. And if we look at the composition of this bacteriophage, we can see that it is only made up of two biomolecules and that are DNA that is represented by blue color and a protein that is represented by black color here. So why Hershey and Chase use this bacteriophage? Because it only has two biomolecules that is eliminating the other biomolecules like carbohydrates and lipids which is present in other organisms. Okay. Now, proteins and DNA are polymers. So, in case of protein, it is made up of tiny units called as amino acids and DNA is made up of tiny units called as nucleotide. So, Hershey and Chase use the isotopic form of two elements present in these monomers and that is the phosphorus atom present in DNA and sulfur present in the amino acid called as cysteine and methionine. So, they took sulfur 35 in order to represent proteins and phosphorus 32 in order to represent the DNA. Now let's see how they performed their experiment. So initially they cultured bacteriophage with radioactive sulfur 35. After some time when the viruses get replicated they centrifuge the mixture and the test tube we get will have a supernatant and a pellet. Now the pink color is represented in the supernatant and it is not present in the pellet. What happened was when bacteriophage was grown with radioactive sulfur 35. Sulfur 35 incorporated itself in the protein part of that bacteriophage. After some time, these viruses infected bacteria and the protein part remained outside of that bacteria. When the centrifuge was done, these bacteriophage will get separate from bacteria and will be present in the supernatant while bacteria as they are heavier than the viruses so they will be present in the pellet. So by this way it is concluded that proteins are not the genetic material. In the next phase of experiment they grow bacteriophage with radioactive phosphorus 32. After some time they centrifuge it and now you can see that the radioactivity is present in the pellet and it is not present in the supernatant. Now what happened was phosphorus 32 will get incorporated in the DNA of that bacteriophage. So they will infect the bacteria and will transfer that DNA inside the bacteria. So after centrifugation the viruses will get separate from the bacteria and will be present in the supernatant. But we can see the radioactivity present in the pellet form it means that DNA is a genetic material. So all the confusion got clear that it is not the protein that is transferring the genetic material from parents to their offspring, rather it is the DNA that is responsible for heredity characteristics. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe our channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.